going on MMA fans? I'm back to do my UFC 126 review video. Um, if you can't tell, I'm very sick. Um, it's one of the things in life that you kind of can't avoid. Uh, it's bound to happen at some point, so um, move this camera back a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about the uh, main event. Um, I did get to catch the spike prelims, and I did not get to catch the Facebook with Yamamoto and Mighty Mouse, unfortunately. Um, did read the play-by-play -play on that one, and if I have time, I'll try to touch on those briefly. But, um, you know, good night of fights. Um, you know, I made sure that I made it out to the sports bar, um, and it was packed. Uh, which I wasn't surprised on, at least for these fights. Um, but regardless of that, let's go ahead and touch on the fights. Antonio Benuelos versus Miguel Torres. Um, you know, <clears throat> this fight didn't... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> this fight didn't necessarily prove a lot to me. Um, and really just didn't get me all that excited you know and it's very rare for me to say that about a fight and I think there's a couple reasons for that and I'll kind of touch on why I'm saying that um, Torres did come out with a good game plan number one you know he used the jab effectively um, you know used the leg kicks and the body kicks very very well to kind of throw Benuelos' timing off but there were a lot of times in this fight where he had cut off distance and could have jumped in the pocket and landed some more combinations because Benuelos really wasn't doing anything on the inside. Uh, Torres was being way, way, way too safe. Um, and I, I just... I don't really... And here's the thing, and this is one of the things that I, I actually want to make a video on this because I think we're going to start seeing more of this coming forward, but... Um, You know, the jab, I believe, is going to be something here over the next few years. And when I say a few years, the next probably two years that we're going to start to see a progression in MMA on because more and more fighters are using it as a weapon, um, as a primary weapon, rather than just throwing combinations. We've seen that with the way that GSP... Uh, picked apart Koscheck. We saw that with what BJ did to Sean Shirk. Uh, this fight's another example of that. Kenny Florian, um, you know, uh, against Takanori Gomi. You know, th these are all guys that are finally starting to use a form of boxing that really does um, translate well against guys in MMA because of the size of the gloves. Um, which, you know, I think through time. Fighters will find a way to deal with that and will evolve and get better with that. But um, regardless of that, while that you know translated into this fight, I think Torres had some some opportunities where he had been Waylos cut off and could have easily landed some more combinations. That's one of the things that you do see with Jacksons and uh, Tristar with either Faraz Sahabi or Greg Jackson, and not all the fighters. I'm just saying. Um, you know, you do see this with a lot of the guys from there, but they won't jump in and take a chance, even if they've got the better, higher percentage of an opportunity to actually land something, and that happened a lot in this fight. So, you know, has Miguel Torres been a brawler in the past? Absolutely. Can he be technical? Absolutely. Did this fight really prove anything? No, not really. Uh, at least to me. I think Miguel Torres has always been a guy that could be technical, and can always use his reach. He just chose not to in some fights. So, I mean, based upon that, it really wasn't that of an impressive fight to me. So, Miguel Torres wins via unanimous decision, 30-27. Congratulations to him. Uh, and that's not being sarcastic. I'm being absolutely serious. Um, Antonio Benuelos, um, he'll be back strong. Um, he's one of the smaller guys at that weight class. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see who they give him next. But for Miguel Torres, solid win. Uh, we'll see how he comes, um, uh, how, you know, maybe some evolution will occur in his next fight, or maybe he'll be a little bit more open. I don't know. We'll see how that plays out, though, uh, against his next opponent. Jake Ellenberger versus Carlos Eduardo Rocha. Um, you know, one of the things that I talked about coming into this fight was Ellenberger's 
tendency to really um, make simple mistakes against guys, and we saw it happen in the first round, and I, I don't like... Like, when I, I talk about these things, I don't like seeing guys do the same thing where they make similar mistakes, but Ellenberger definitely did that in the first round again. And, you know, he's lucky that Rocha was looking primarily for leg locks and knee bars rather than, um, you know, isolating an arm, going for an inverted topside triangle from north-south, going for, an, you know, a north-south choke. Because um, Ellenberger got out-positioned, out-grappled in the first round, got swept, you know, almost into side control with a beautiful Kimura um, as the round was coming to an end. Um, man, very, very impressive grappling from Rocha. Um, rounds two and three, um, Ellenberger turns it up, tries not to clinch up or get close to Rocha, uses his boxing and his jab, and some good one-two combinations to try to keep Rocha at bay. Rocha landed some pretty good leg kicks uh, and some high kicks, um, but his his boxing was pretty rudimentary, um, which is something that I think he needs to work on. Um, but Ellenberger steals rounds two and three pretty convincingly, I think, um, to win a 29-28 unanimous decision. Um, let me just touch on something very briefly. Those of you that were following my Twitter last night, you probably saw me tweet about this, but one judge scored this 30-27 to 27 for Carlos Eduardo Rocha. Alright, I'm just going to say it like this without being um, rude or unprofessional, but um, number one, whoever the judge was, which I'm going to take a stab, it might have been Adelaide Bird, which in my opinion, on this score, you need to get your eyes checked. Um, second thing I want to say, Keith Kaiser, you're always making these statements about how this doesn't happen. Well, it does. Is it going to change? Probably not. But this is the kind of crap that pisses me off. It just does. When I hear stupid scores like this, what, what fight were you watching? That's all I want to know. And I want to know the criteria that you're using because... I just don't see it. I don't see it. On to the next fight. <laughs> Ryan Bader versus John Jones. Um, both these guys were on a collision course for each other. Um, you know, whether they met now or they met later, if both these guys, you know, this is kind of a cliche statement, but if both of these guys would have kept on winning, they would have fought each other regardless. So, um, but, you know, this was an interesting matchup. Bader, you know, with the solid wins that he's had recently, you know, the one over Nog, the one over, you know, uh, Keith Jardine, John Jones beating down Matt Shashenko, beating down Brandon Vera, you know, Matt Hamill, even though that was um, uh, considered a loss for him. Um, you know, both of these guys have been on a decent stretch uh, win-wise. Um, you know, and in this fight, Bader landed a couple good combinations in the first round, but past that, it was the John Jones show. Um, you know, getting takedowns, being better in the clinch, landing good uh, inside leg kicks, um, some nice high kicks that he was throwing. You know, and John Jones was just able to smother and control Bader when he got him down. Goes for a beautiful topside guillotine. Um, um, uh, over Ryan Bader and cinches it up, moves to the side to you know try to create more tension and pressure, and is able to make uh, Ryan Bader tap. So congratulations to John Jones. Um, Ryan Bader, you know he'll be back. Um, I'm sure he'll you know learn from you know, the mistakes that he's made in this fight. Uh, for John Jones, I think the biggest thing, um, you know, especially after what we saw uh, occur uh, in this fight, I'm gonna drink some coffee. trying to help loosen this stuff up. Um, I think the biggest thing with John Jones um, that he's got to prepare for is, number one, he's been offered a title shot against Shogun uh, because Rashad Evans blew his knee out. Um, I will touch on that fight later because there's a lot of intangibles and it's way too far out, at least to me, because you need to, we need to see how training camps are going for Shogun. We need to see how training camps are going for Jones, but for me to make that type of call now, 
Um, I still have a strong opinion about it. I'm just not going to talk about it just yet. Um, but, you know, I think there's some minor things he needs to work on. So just some more things with his striking um, and tightening it up. Being flashy all the time is great, but you also need to be technical. And I think that's just something small that I think he will improve upon, but he definitely needs to do. Ryan Bader, you know, I think the biggest thing will be, you know, work a little bit more with your clinch. Um, specifically, try to work on that. Uh, and just try to get stronger there. But uh, both of these guys, they'll be back. Um, Ryan Bader, I'm sure, will learn from this. John Jones, it'll be interesting to see um, you know, how he fares against Shogun Hua, and we'll discuss that fight at a later time. Forrest Griffin versus Rich Franklin. Um, this one definitely didn't go the way I thought it was going to go. Um, you know, Forrest you know, was able to come in and use a size. He had some good you know, combinations, uh, kind of throwing Rich's timing off. Rich had some, you know, pretty good, you know, uh, body kicks, you know, and a couple good combinations here and there. But Griffin, for the most part, was able to do well in the clinch, do well, you know, landing combinations. Um, you know, he was able to get Rich down, control position there, uh, land some ground and pound, and pretty much takes this fight pretty convincingly, at least in my eyes. Um, I know that... Um, the third round, I think some people gave to Rich. Um, I gave the first two rounds to Forrest, which uh, the third was a close one. Um, I can't remember who I gave it to, to be honest. So I don't want to sit here and say that I would have given it to, to Franklin. Um, but regardless of that, um, Forrest Griffin uh, wins this fight via unanimous decision, 29-28, all the way across the judges' scorecards. And... Um, stay there um you know really you know showed that in this fight number one the size um you know the, the strength advantage and the size advantage really played a huge part in this fight um you know and he, and he looked solid uh, as far as you know his his kickboxing his clinch work and even on the ground landing some ground and pouncing congratulations to him for rich franklin um You know, I don't know who they're going to give him next. Um, you know, I think he'll continue to fight at 205. Um, but this, you know, I thought that Rich would come in with a game plan of footwork and moving a lot. Uh, but Forrest was just able to close the distance and grab a hold of Rich, and that just did not, you know, spell uh, good things for Rich. So congratulations to Forrest. Um, uh, you know, had some impressive parts in this fight, and, um, you know, I think that uh, we'll see a, another solid fight from him in the future. All right, on to the main event. Oh, my God. Let me drink this coffee real quick, and then I'm going to talk about this. I feel like I'm Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> oh, jeez. Anderson Silva versus Vitor Belfort for the uh, middleweight title. Um, you know, a lot of people coming into this fight, really thought that Vitor was the guy that could hurt Anderson. Um, you know, and... Maybe I was one of those guys, but more or less what I looked at was the fact that Vitor's speed, I thought, would play the biggest part in this fight. You know, the first couple minutes we had a lot of tentativeness which I talked about you know I figured that they were both going to be real tentative before they started to you know exchange and actually uh, throw uh, some combinations then it started to heat up uh, Belfort's hands were actually pretty you know pretty solid he was you know beating Anderson to the punch on a couple of them um, landed a nice left straight um, that backed Anderson up but Anderson then lands this it was a teep kick at first, and then he extended it into a crescent kick to the face. Oh, my God. <laughs> Drops him, <laughs> kind of waits for a second to see if Vitor is, is all right. Moves his leg to the side and just goes, that's it. <laughs> um, I, I To be honest, I, I dropped, I always drop my beer at the sports bar. Um. It's very rare that you ever see something like this occur. I know I was on, um, hold on one second. I know I was on Skype last night with some guys, with Rob, Kaz. Um, I was talking to um, Cascade Soldier and uh, Brent, BC. 
Oh, God, man. I always mess his name up, and I, I feel bad. BC MVP, that's what it is. I, I hope I got that right. But Brent, um, um, you know, a couple other guys uh, from the YouTube community, and we were talking about this. It's just so rare to see this type of a situation happen with this type of a kick. And, you know, to be honest, I'm not surprised. Um, I really thought that, and I'm being 100%, I really thought that Vitor's speed would be the biggest key to this fight. And um, that didn't really matter when you get kicked in the face, does it? Um, <laughs> I really don't know what much, to, well, how much to, or not how much, what to say on it. I mean, it's it just goes to prove where Anderson Silva is at. Um, you know, I was hoping, you know, and I went in and I'm still wearing my shirt from last night, my Anderson Silva Sinister t-shirt, and I wore it to the sports bar, but, you know, I was just hoping for a good fight, regardless, even though I thought Vitor might have the advantage in that one area, which would dictate why he might win, but for as long as it lasted, I mean, you know, <laughs> it just, it shows where Anderson's at, it shows why he is who he is. Um, who is he going to get next? They're talking about the GSP fight if GSP beat Shields. Honestly, I don't want to see that fight. Because I'll tell you all, I'll tell everyone straight up what I think is going to happen. I think GSP's face is going to get wrecked. Um, and it's not because I'm on Anderson Silva's train or hype. I've said that in the past that I thought it was a bad matchup for GSP. Um, but regardless of that, it's probably going to happen. I don't want to see that fight particularly, but... You know, there are fans that want to see it, so it'll probably happen. For Vitor, um, you know, he'll be back. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who they give him next at middleweight. I'm sure he'll get a, um, you know, um, a ladder type of fight where they try to build him back up and give him some competition. Um, but, man, that was a nasty, nasty crescent kick. Holy Jesus. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, with that, I'm going to end this video because I've talked and rambled for a long time. Real quick. Um, let me just touch on a couple things. Donald Cerrone beat, uh, beats Paul Kelly via rear naked choke second round. Um, you know, some people were sending me stuff on Twitter. I think I actually called that one correct. Holy crap. That's very rare. Good on that one. Uh, Chad Mendez beats uh, Michihiro Omegala via, via unanimous decision. Um, um, I think a lot of people kind of saw that one coming. Um, but it was a, a decent fight. That one was on spike. Uh, Demetrius Johnson beats uh, Kid Yamamoto via unanimous decision. Um, you know, takedowns, combinations on the feet. So, solid night of fights. Um, if you haven't had a chance to check them out, make sure that you do. I'll be back sometime this week. I want to talk about the jab and what it's going to spell in MMA moving forward. I think that that's a topic that I've, I've really been thinking about, and I've said I wanted to talk about it in a couple other videos. But I think now is the time to start talking about it, because I think we're going to start seeing this type of aspect in MMA become more prevalent, and I think we're going to start seeing uh, more and more uh, guys use it. So I think it's a good topic video. Let me know what you guys think about that, and I'll catch you guys later.